Hey guys, today we're going to begin in chapter one. We're going to talk about the introduction to blood collection. There's several learning objectives here that I want you guys to take a peek at and make sure that you stay on path with your learning objectives. These learning objectives are designed to guide you as into what content you should study and to help better prepare you for your testing. Um, so it's, it's important that we understand the correct collection technique, the purpose and regulations um, of how, how the guidelines are set as far as legal considerations, safety precautions, quality management. These are all very important things that, that you will need to know um, as far as what we're looking at in Chapter 1. There's key terms that I want you guys to be familiar with. You will see these key terms on the test, so you must understand them. Um, these key terms are listed in Chapter 1, Page 2. Aliquot refers to a portion of the sample. Um, so if we're talking aliquot, then we're talking about just a piece or a part of a portion of that actual sample. Chain of custody is the documentation and collection and handling of forensic samples. An example of chain of custody would be if they were pulling a blood alcohol level on a patient. Um, maybe they were in a car accident or um, maybe they're doing genetic testing to see if this child belongs to them. These involve the chain of custody. There's a, it, it goes through a process of people and signatures to make sure that the sample is not um, contaminated, skewed, um, somebody tampers with it. Maybe they don't want to pay child support. So this is not my baby. So I'm going to pay, I'm going to go pay the, um, the lab technician that I know that works in the lab and she's been there for years. So I'm, I'm going to pay her to help me out. What happens with the chain of custody is this, it, you can't break that chain of custody because the, the lab results would not be considered accurate if you do. So there's a process of people and steps that, that you go through um, when we're talking chain of custody. CLIA is the Clinical Laboratory Improvement Amendments. It's federal regulations governing laboratories and testing of human samples. And then we have our CLSI, which is Clinical and Laboratory Standards Institute. This is a nonprofit organization um, that publishes standards and guidelines for clinical lab procedures. And then we're going to talk about the Healthcare Associated Infection, the HAI. A healthcare associated infection is acquired by a patient as the result of a hospital stay or outpatient procedure. Um, and then HIPAA, of course, is the Health Insurance Portability and Accountability Act. It is, it is designed to protect privacy. And then we're going to talk about the pre-examination phase. The pre-examination phase is the process that occurs before testing of a specimen. With the pre-examination phase, we have pre-examination variables. Again, this is things that happen before a specimen is actually sent to the lab for testing. Um, pre-examination variables can affect the quality of the sample. So anything that happens before the patient has their blood collect collected or before any type of procedure, these pre-examination variables, again, they can affect the quality of samples. So that's why they're so important. Um, and then the sample is one or mo more parts taken from a system. And then the specimen is a portion of a body fluid or tissue taken for examination, such as an aliquot of a plasma or organ or serum. Um, so there again, there, um, there's your key terms that, that we're, we're going to talk about. Um, moving forward, I want to talk about the shifting of the blood sample collection and responsibility. With all of the health changes that are taking place today, um, you know, it's, it's not uncommon for them to cross train individuals. So if you go to work, you're getting four certifications. If you go to work as a patient care tech, um, person and then they say, mm, well, you have your phlebotomy certification too, so we want you to, we want you to perform both tasks here. That's fine. That's not an issue. However, with that being said, you may be working as a CNA and have no other certification or a medical assistant, 
and because they're short-handed or low on staff, you may be trained to collect blood. And what I'm getting at with the cross check cross training and shifting of the healthcare skills and the medical skills it's very important that if if you are are contacted and they're working to cross train you on a skill if you're not comfortable it's super 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 important that you guys um that you guys relay that to your supervisor or your direct report because you don't want to do anything to harm a patient if you they come to you and approach you and they want you to start taking blood or they want you to do anything they want to train you for a new task and you're not comfortable it is your responsibility to make sure you're comfortable and you can perform that task um you know with with the appropriate technique and ability um moving forward we need to make sure that we are collecting quality samples obtaining didactic information and technique um this is this is very very important and this is one of the things that we're going to address throughout this course and with procedures everywhere that you go to work you're going to find um that there's a procedures manual this procedures manual details and describes how you should perform each activity with that being said these procedures are written in accordance with the clinical and lab standards institute osha which is occupational safety and health administration and the cdc which is the centers for disease control um so just know that if you are in a precarious situation or you're in a situation that you you know you don't fully understand you can refer to your procedures manual because these guidelines are written in accordance with the laws that we have to follow so that is it for video number one i'm going to continue on in the next video and we're going to talk about quality samples and quality results but in the meantime this is chapter one video one and if you have questions please let me know